In the previous video, I talked about subspaces, linear and affine, as a way to understand flat objects, lines, planes, and higher dimensional versions of these. In linear algebra, there are two constructions to understand these geometric shapes. I'm going to talk about the second construction here, and it is one that you're already familiar with from calculus, loci. A locus is a set of points which satisfies some equations. Equations here are plural. Several equations together can create a locus. In calculus, I only talked about the locus of one equation. The extension here is the locus of multiple equations. As was the standard example in calculus, the circle in R2 is the locus of the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. For an example of multiple equations, consider the equations x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0 in R3. There are three equations here, and the points in the locus must satisfy all three equations. The first equation insists that the x-coordinate is 0, the second that the y-coordinate is 0, and the third that the z-coordinate is 0. The only point that matches all three of these is the origin, the zero vector. Therefore, the locus of these three equations is just the origin. Notice that the origin is not the locus of the single equation x plus y plus z equals 0. It is true that the origin satisfies, so it is a point on the locus, but there are many other points on this locus as well, such as the vector 2, negative 2, 0. Let me very briefly remind you what a linear equation is. If I have variables x1 to xn and constants a1 to an and c, these constants being real numbers, then a linear equation looks like this. I multiply the variables by the constants, add them up, and make them equal to the final constant c. All right, let me get to the point now. All linear or affine subspaces in Rn are loci of linear equations. This is the second description. If I want to describe a line, a plane, or other infinitely extended flat objects, I can now do so in three ways. First, it is a span or an offset span. Second, it is a linear or affine subspace. And third, it is the locus of some number of linear equations. All of these concepts align. All of them are different ways of talking about the same mathematical thing. So what does this mean? Let me run through some of the first important examples. All of Euclidean space Rn is the locus of 0 equals 0, which is the linear equation I get when all the constants ai in the linear equation are 0. Since all points satisfy this, all of Rn is the locus. In R2, the locus of x equals a constant is a vertical line. I did this review back at the start of calculus. x equals 3 is the vertical line that crosses the x-axis at 3. Likewise, in R2, the locus of y equals a constant is a horizontal line. y equals 4 is the horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 4. Now that I can have the locus of more than one equation, I can take the locus of both x equals 3 and y equals 4. What points satisfy these equations? Only the point 3, 4. So the locus of these two equations is just this individual point. Let me be a bit more general now. A line in R2 is the locus of any one linear equation. These are pretty familiar to you from calculus, though I won't often use the slope-intercept form that you may be most accustomed to. A plane in R3 is also the locus of any one linear equation. With one equation in R3, I don't get a line anymore. I get a whole plane. And the reason for this comes from dimensions and restrictions. A linear equation is a restriction, so, so it should drop the dimension. Usually, it drops the dimension by 1. R2 is dimension 2. A line has dimension 1. So one equation drops the dimension from 2 to 1, giving a line. R3, however, has dimension 3. One equation drops the dimension by 1. Well, that gives a plane. This extends to higher dimensions in the notion of a hyperplane a locus of one linear equation in Rn. This will not be a plane dimension 2. Instead, it will be dimension n minus 1 because there's only one restriction to drop. The best generalization of a plane is not simply a two-dimensional thing, but rather something that is one-dimensional less 
then it's ambient space. It has one equation, one restriction, so the dimension is dropped by one from whatever it started in. Let me speak a little bit more about multiple equations and intersection. In the example I did in R2 above, the locus of two linear equations gave a point. And this point was exactly the intersection of the two lines given by each of the two equations separately. This works in general. Say I have three equations. Then I can consider each equation by itself, and each gives a locus, a hyperplane even, since there's only one equation. So I have three loci, L1, L2, and L3. I can consider them to be the locus of individual equations, but I can also consider the locus of all three equations. This is going to be something smaller, since there are more restrictions. And it will be precisely the intersection of all three loci. The points that satisfy all three equations are exactly the points that are part of this locus, the intersection of all three L1, L2, and L3. Let me end with a clarification of this idea of restricting down. Spans and loci are two methods of building the geometric objects of this course, flat, unbounded objects in Rn. They go about the construction in opposite ways. Spans start with vectors and take linear combinations, put the vectors together to build more vectors. Spans are built up from vectors, and the more vectors you add, the larger the span gets. They are built from the ground up. Loci are built from equations which are restrictions. They start with everything and asks what, ask what happens when a rule is imposed, what points remain. The more equations or rules imposed, the fewer points remain. They are built from the top down, getting smaller and smaller with more and more equations.